Thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Kerry Ferguson, the Chair of Deaf Children Australia's Board. On their behalf, I welcome you all to this very significant milestone in our history to pay tribute to our pioneering founder, Frederick John Rose, or FJ Rose as he's fondly known. We are delighted to have Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desso, Governor of Victoria, provide an opening message. Let me start by acknowledging board members, staff, volunteers, supporters, and all those connected with Deaf Children Australia. I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which I'm sending this message and pay my respects to elders past and present and to any elders attending this virtual event. I'm absolutely delighted to be sending this message to help celebrate the commemoration of F.J. Rose and his magnificent contribution to Deaf Victorians. You know, it's one thing to leave this life having had a positive impact on the lives of many people, but to have helped create tangible support to so many more, now across 100 years, is to leave a particularly significant legacy. As you know well, the story of F.J. Rose is one of selfless dedication to others. Having come to Melbourne from London as a young man in 1852 and turned his hand at uh, various sorts of work, he found his true vocation, dedicating his life to deaf children. His is a story of commitment to a cause and the capacity to garner support to ensure that deaf Victorians regardless of age, gender or social status, could be educated and able to enjoy completely fulfilling lives. His own profound deafness certainly never held him back. Under his stewardship, he created a school, the institution that supported it, and the famous bluestone building that housed it on St Kilda Road. Well, one of the great joys for me in this role arises when I'm linked through history with one of my predecessors. That's the case today, but with a direct link to not only one, but to three former governors, each of whom supported F.J. Rose's achievements. Victoria's second governor, Sir Henry Barclay, chaired what became the first Victorian deaf and dumb institution, as it was then known, in 1862. Four years later, our third governor, Sir Charles Henry Darling, laid the first stone for the institution's premises. And later that same year, it was our fourth governor, the Honourable Sir Henry uh, Thomas Manners Sutton, who conducted the inaugural ceremony when the building opened. Well, as our state's 29th governor, I'm certain that many governors in between have been involved in supporting what is today known as Deaf Children Australia, as was Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II when she visited in 1954. That support has transcended the changes in eras, leaders, governance and medical advances because at the core of your work has always been and continues to be the fostering of inclusion, equality and access for our deaf and hard of hearing children. We can be grateful to FJ Rose, to all who've furthered his good work across the 100 years since his passing and to Deaf Children Australia for supporting these youngsters to realise their potential as happy and productive Victorians. Thank you for all that you do. FJ Rose would feel proud. I would like to thank Her Excellency for joining us on this memorable occasion. It was on this day 100 years ago that FJ Rose died at the age of 89. I am full of admiration for this extraordinary man. His life was one of great achievement and also tragedy. He died a poor man, giving all he had to ensure deaf children and adults enjoyed equality. He shared among all he knew and taught a richness and generosity that is still deeply felt today, a humble and selfless man. It is truly fitting we acknowledge his contribution and legacy and share his story. What he achieved was nothing less than extraordinary. With his great friend, the Reverend William Moss, he was instrumental in creating the Bluestone Building, which is embedded in deaf history. It continues to provide amenity and accommodation for the support of deaf children and youth today, and is also an iconic landmark of Victoria. At four and a half years of age, he became deaf after contracting scarlet fever. He enjoyed a great education and career opportunities and had the necessary support to set him on his path. 
Rose was distressed to learn when he travelled to Victoria in the 1850s that there wasn't a single school for deaf children in the colony and immediately decided to make amends. He ended up dedicating his life to the betterment of the entire deaf community in Victoria from the mid-1800s. We recognise and pay tribute to his hard work, dedication, courage and adventurous spirit. On this very special occasion, we are also very fortunate to be able to hear directly the stories of members of our deaf community. I am delighted to introduce them to you.
Today, Deaf Children Australia continues FJ Rose's legacy. We are proud to support his vision to ensure deaf and hard of hearing children and young people are afforded the same opportunities as their hearing peers. We are committed to ensuring they have opportunities to build their identity, access their preferred language, take part in new experiences, achieve their goals and boldly determine their futures. We are incredibly proud to carry on FJ Rose's vision. We also share his view that all children and young people, regardless of culture or beliefs or background, should have access to the supports and services they need. I must make mention of our donors. It was in January 1863 that we received our first donation. And it is the continued generosity of our donors that supports deaf and hard of hearing children and youth in living their best life. Thank you. In closing, I thank you once again for attending today as we all pay our respects to FJ Rose, a true visionary.